thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Let us pray. Mighty God, we bow before you and come humbly to you. We welcome you here with us this afternoon as we praise you and glorify you. We ask you to bring the wonder of your strength and power as you visit us today. May our gathering be blessed through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to welcome you all in the sanctuary that's joining us in the sanctuary on Facebook and on Zoom to our afternoon fellowship service. We do have a few announcements, and they read as. We would like to say congratulations to Minister and Mrs. Calvin and Maggie Thornton on their wedding as of yesterday in Orlando, Florida. Congratulations to the two of you. The State of Connecticut COVID-19 Summary as of September 23rd, 2021 is as follows. And I'm getting tired of doing this. 210 cases, 282 are hospitalized, and the state positivity rate is 1.88%. It has dropped. The state Department of Health is reporting 74.5% of Connecticut residents are fully vaccinated. I encourage you to speak to your primary care physician about getting vaccinated. If you do not have a primary care physician, contact the church and we will be able to provide resources for you through our partnership with Yale New Haven Health and Bridgeport Hospital. If you would like to make a donation while you are on Facebook and Zoom or even here in the sanctuary, you may do so through our direct link from Giveify at, at https colon slash slash g i b dot l i slash l t u zero e i or you can go to our website at www.stmatthewbaptist.org and you can donate there as well now if you're in the sanctuary and you're making a donation on your envelope please put your name and address on the envelope if you would like to receive a uh, letter from the church for the end of the year tax year uh, tax donations and that is all of our announcements our offering scripture is coming from malachi 310 bring all bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me in this says the lord almighty and see if I will not throw out open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will be no room enough to store it. Let us pray. Father God, we ask you to bless these offerings. Lift them up, Lord, for the uplifting of your kingdom. Lord, we ask you to bless the ones who were able to give and the ones that were not. Lord, bless us on this day as we offer up our first fruits. And for these and our blessings, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
afternoon is coming from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. And it reads, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your, ta why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need to die, but the sick. But God, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' holy name. Thank you for another opportunity to preach and teach your word. Bless the hearers of your word, and if the hearers are blessed, I have been called to do what you have asked me to do. Now, God, prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word. I ask this in our blessing. In Jesus' name. that was read, I would like to use as a title, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? <laughs> Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Now see, as I was writing this, I had a little chuckle. It made me think about something that happened in my childhood. I had to be about nine or ten years old, and I shared a room with my brother. My sister was across the hall. So something woke me up. The bang of pots on the stove. And I went over to my brother's bed and I shook him and I said, what's going on downstairs? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know, I'm asleep. Ask him. So he heard it too. And then he looked at me and we went across from the Pam's house. We went across all the Pam's room. Pam's my sister, of course. And we woke her up. And we said, did you hear that? And she said, no. And then she heard the pop bang again. So we go creeping down the stairs and we see this white man sitting at my dad's chair in the living room, in the kitchen, in the dining room. And we're wondering, who is this man in our house? Come to find out. My dad, whether he was going to work or went to a store or something, seen some man either begging for food or money or whatever, brought him to his house where his wife and three kids were and asked his lovely wife to make him something to eat. Lord Jesus, who is coming to dinner or breakfast? <laughs> In the 1967 film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? that starred the iconic Cindy Poitier as John, a 37-year-old widower. The film centered around his engagement to a 23-year-old white woman named Joanna, whose parents didn't know she was even engaged. So she had this bright idea to invite John and his parents to her parents' house to tell them about their engagement. Though her parents are liberal-minded, they are initially shocked that their daughter is engaged, especially to a black man. Her mother gradually accepts the situation, but her father objects because of the bigotry and hate a mixed marriage would face in society. He didn't want his daughter to experience the unhappiness and all the problems the couple would face from society. Then on top of all that, John's parents are invited to this dinner party. They also are shocked even to discover that Joanna's white. As the film continues and all the back and forth conversations between parents and the priest, the negotiations to marry or not to marry, who approves, who disapproves of this engagement, the parents finally accept what is going on and that their children will be getting married. Guess who's coming to dinner? From our text, we are told that Jesus was walking along and he saw Matthew. Jesus saw a person, not a tax collector. Jesus saw all the vulnerabilities Matthew had. Jesus saw this person who was being used by the Romans as a tool and was despised by his own people. Jesus saw this person who had become a tax collector. So the text says Jesus went to Matthew while he was working at the tax office and said, follow me. And Matthew followed him. Once again, just as 
In the case of Peter and Andrew and all the other disciples that came before him, Jesus said the same thing. Matthew didn't follow Jesus like a zombie. But what Matthew did was, he did it without reservation. Just as the other disciples did. They followed Jesus without reservation. More than any other disciple, Matthew had a clear idea of how much it would cost him to follow Jesus. Yet, he did not even hesitate to do so. When Jesus said to him, follow me, he left behind his tax office booth. A secure job with the Roman government. Great insurance. And walked into uncertainty. An uncertain future following behind this dude named Jesus. Matthew had nothing to fall back on. Matthew knew, though Matthew was hated by his people for being a tax collector, it could be said that he never abandoned his faith. Because out of that faith, he followed Jesus without hesitation. We walk by faith, not by sight. Matthew was paid by the Romans to collect the taxes from other Jews and merchants. That was his job. He was a tax collector employed by the Romans who occupied Jerusalem. Matthew was not like the other disciples. They had their fishing businesses to go back to. Matthew was a banker or an accountant, but he kept numbers. He was not a fisherman. Matthew didn't get a severance package when he left the Romans. He didn't have savings, and he didn't have a 401k to tap into. If this Jesus thing did not work out, he couldn't go back to the Romans and say, can I get my job back? Matthew was up a creek. Matthew was a tax collector. He took commissions from the amount of taxes brought in. And like other tax collectors, he may have overcharged others just a little bit, maybe to line his own pockets. Just a little bit. If you look at it, Matthew was being paid from the taxes out of the pockets of his peers. That's why he was hated so much. Tax collectors had a reputation of being cheats and supporters of Rome. But two things happened when Matthew decided to follow Jesus. First, Jesus gave him a new life. He not only belonged to a new group of people, but he also belonged to the Son of God. Matthew was not only accepting a different way of life, he was now accepted into a new family. Matthew went from a despised tax collector to be accepted by Jesus Christ. Now if he, the Lord our God, can do that for Matthew, he can do the same for you and me. Second, Jesus gave Matthew a new purpose for his skills. The only tool that Matthew took with him when he left that tax collector's job was a pen. God made Matthew a record keeper. Jesus' call eventually allowed him to put his skills to their finest work. Because of his accurate record keeping and his eye for detail, the Gospel of Matthew came as a result. However, some biblical scholars are not in agreement that Matthew is the author of this book. However, as we read in verse 10, after his call, Matthew invited Jesus to a dinner party at his house. Matthew was hosting the dinner party, and Jesus is the guest of honor. At this dinner party, everyone is there, even those nosy Pharisees. <laughs> My late friend, Deacon uh, Jeff Daniels, that Messiah, he used to call, he called Pharisees church folks. When these church folks see who is at this dinner party, they raise the question to Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? 
Let's have a little sidebar for a second. What kills me is this. If it's such a sin to break bread with tax collectors and sinners, why on earth are these church folks at this house, at this house uh, for a dinner party? Would you be in someone's house or presence if you have condemned it as being sinful? I don't think so. So Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but call the sinners. Jesus went to those who needed mercy and healing. To them he brought forgiveness, life, righteousness that comes from God and God alone. In other words, Jesus was saying to the church folks, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. By no means was Jesus saying that those church folks are healthy. He was pointing out that that's how they seen themselves. Jesus told them he was there to help people who knew they needed help spiritually. The purpose of good works and evangelism is to reach the lost. Christians are not called on to barricade themselves away from anyone that they see as a sinner. Of course it's important to guard friendships and associations. However, believers cannot live out the love of Christ while avoiding all possible contact with lost people. Self-labeled Christians or churches who turn their nose up to sinners are like doctors in hospitals who, re who refuse to associate with the sick and the poor in the community that they serve. Jesus was not condoning the wrong choices of the people he set and ate with. Showing love and kindness does not require and does not imply endorsement of anything that that person is saying or doing, or what they believe in. Christ was introducing them to himself as the only way to be forgiven and redeemed. He was showing them the true face of God, full of love, compassion for them. Those who are sure that they are righteous can't be saved because the first step is following Jesus and acknowledging that our and acknowledging our needs and admitting we don't have all the answers. When Jesus called Matthew to be one of his disciples, Matthew got up and followed Jesus, leaving a lucrative career with the Romans. When God called you to follow or obey him, do you do it with abandonment as Matthew did? Or do you have to think about it for a second to see what the ramifications would be if you follow Jesus? Sometimes the decision to follow Christ requires difficult and painful choices. Mm -hmm, that's right. Like Matthew, we must decide to leave behind those things that, we, that would keep us from following Christ. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you would like to become a part of St. Matthew Baptist Church, this is your time to do so. You may do so by coming on your Christian experience, baptism, or for watching. If you are joining us on Facebook and Zoom, and you would like to be a part of St. Matt's, you may do so by contacting the church through our website, and someone will reach out to you.
y'all could just stand where we are and able for the altar call, that would be fine. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time of fellowship and a chance to give you the honor and glory. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. You are the stone that the builders rejected, so we build our foundation of faith on you as our cornerstone. You are the bread when we hunger and the water when we thirst. God, we come to you broken, frustrated, lost, confused, seeking your faith, asking for your blessing in our lives. You know the burden that we carry, so we ask you, Lord, to lighten our load. So we humble ourselves Lord, we know weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. We pray for your guidance and protection from all hurt, harm, and danger. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us in the sanctuary, on Facebook, and on Zoom. Thank you, our music director, brother, excuse me, not brother, Deacon Stags, <laughs> Deacon Diller, and our new house gu guitar, <laughs> Brother Scott. Thank you all very much for joining us. And of all hearts and minds, we are here for the benediction for this visit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.